Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so let us continue with uh, trying to classify uh, Riemann surfaces. Uh, so, you see we have already looked at uh, two, two cases, uh, when the universal covering of Riemann surface is uh, P 1 the Riemann sphere, then we have seen that the Riemann surface itself has to be P 1 uh, that is holomorphically isomorphic to P 1 which is C union infinity okay, via this stereographic projection. And uh, um, we also seen that if a Riemann surface has universal cover the complex plane, uh, then it is fundamental group has to be abelian and uh, there are only three cases the fundamental group being 0 in which case it is biholomorphic to the complex plane, then the fundamental group is being z isomorphic to z the integers and addition in which case uh, it is a uh, uh, you know Riemann surface structure on a cylinder on a real cylinder and uh, uh, the standard uh, covering map in this case is just the exponential map from c to c star the punctured uh, c star is a punctured uh, uh, complex plane okay, uh, and c to c star is the exponential map. So, this is the uh, this is the single uh, representative okay. and uh, when the fundamental group is isomorphic to z cross z then uh, the Riemann surface is a complex torus. Okay. Uh, so, these were the cases when uh, the universal covering was the uh, complex plane. Now, we have to look at uh, those Riemann surfaces with universal covering the upper half plane okay, uh, which is the only case that is left and uh, uh, of course, instead of the half upper half plane we can also choose the unit disc okay, because they are biholomorphic to one another um, and uh, I will only uh, begin with uh, trying to look at those Riemann surfaces which have universal covering uh, the upper half plane and which are abelian. Okay. So, in this way I would have uh, covered uh, classifying all Riemann surfaces which have abelian fundamental groups. Okay. So, um, fine. So, uh, how does one proceed? So, one needs to uh, somehow uh, uh, try to answer the following question. Uh, what are the uh, kinds of Mobius transformations that you can find in the uh, deck transformation group? Okay. So, that is the question that needs to be answered. Right. So, let me write that down. See, uh, you know that uh, X is a Riemann surface uh, with, uh, let me say, uh, universal covering uh, X sub unit. So you have you have this this universal covering. Okay. Then you know that um, if I uh, if I fix a point small x in capital X, then the fun the first fundamental group of the base at based at the point small x is naturally identified with the deck transformation group of this uh, universal cover, okay, which is a subgroup of uh, holomorphic automorphisms. Of the uh, universal cover. Okay, so uh, and uh, of course uh, the universal uh, cover modulo this deck transformation group is precisely x. Okay, um, so uh, the question is, uh, uh, what are the uh, what are the elements? What are the elements here? Okay, see, so you know. Uh, so this 
uh, this has only three possibilities uh, you know x sub univ is a Riemann surface and uh, it is a simply connected Riemann surface. So, this is either uh, P 1 uh, which is a Riemann sphere or it is a complex plane or it is the upper half plane okay. And uh, in each of these cases the uh, group of holomorphic automorphisms are Mobius transformations okay. So, uh, automorphisms the holomorphic automorphisms of uh, P 1 are going to be all Mobius transformations okay. These are all Mobius transformations and then uh, you have the automorphisms of uh, the holomorphic automorphisms of the complex plane are going to be just the upper triangular ones okay and uh, the holomorphic automorphisms of uh, the upper half plane are going to be uh, with real coefficients okay. So, uh, but these are all uh, of course these two are subgroups of this and they are all uh, uh, in any case they are Mobius transformations and the question we have to ask is uh, uh, what which uh, what is the image of the fundamental group here okay. The question we want to ask is what is the image of the fundamental group here. In other words we want to know which among these holomorphic automorphisms namely which among these Mobius transformations are are going to be in the deck transformation group okay that is the question. So, we need to somehow uh, study them in a little bit more detail before we can cover the uh, uh, the case when the universal cover is the upper half plane okay. So, uh, so let me re let, let, let me recall uh, what we do is uh, that uh, a Mobius transformation uh, transformation is it going to uh, a z plus b by c z plus d uh, where a d minus b c is not 0 okay. Uh, this Mobius transformation uh, is identified with an element of PSL 2 C okay. Uh, namely the normalization that one does is that one makes uh, the determinant equal to 1 okay. So, uh, can be uh, uh, normalized uh, to, to satisfy um, determinant is equal uh, so I should write determinant of the matrix to satisfy uh, A D minus B C is equal to 1 okay. So, what I mean by that is <coughs> uh, you can uh, So, what I mean by that is I mean that is how we that is how we wrote the uh, you know the the groups the these groups. So, what we did was <coughs> we took uh, so for example, you take this Mobius transformation uh, So, this is uh, z going to a z plus b by C z plus D and I am going to just map it to the following element of uh, P S L 2 C okay. Namely I will put A B C D okay and uh, let me call this as uh, capital A all right. I will call this as capital A and what I will do is uh, the determinant of this is now A D minus B C all right but I would like to have the determinant to be 1. So, what I do is I divide by determinant uh, square root of determinant of a okay. So, what I do is I map this to uh, uh, the element. So, if I call this as a um, so, as, so let me write it properly. Um, so, I will map it to 1 by root of 
a d minus b c times this ok. So, so what I mean is uh, so, uh, so here this a d minus b c equal to 1 um, is a condition if we, of course, if a d minus b c is not 1 then I uh, will have to change this a b c d ok and how I change it is by dividing throughout by a d by square root of a d minus b c because you see now the determinant of this is going to be you see it is going to be uh, square of this ok which is 1 by a d minus b c into determinant of this which is a d minus b c. So, it is determinant 1 right and of course, I have put a p here uh, which means that uh, I am not worried about plus or uh, uh, I am not worried about uh, the other representative which is putting minus everywhere ok. So, these two representatives are supposed to form one class ok uh, because this is just S L 2 C the determinant 1 uh, matrices ok 2 by 2 matrices modulo the subgroup uh, given by plus or minus the identity ok that is what P S L 2 C is. So, let me write that down this is just S L 2 C determinant 1 modulo the subgroup given by plus or minus identity that is a 2 by 2 identity matrix ok. So, this is how you uh, uh, identify Mobius transformations uh, with uh, elements of PSL 2 C and it happens that this is a uh, uh, the Mobius transformations uh, here on the on this side uh, uh, this is a group under composition and uh, this is also a group under multiplication standard matrix multiplication and uh, this map is a group isomorphism ok. This this map is an isomorphism uh, isomorphism of groups ok. So, that is how you uh, identify all the Mobius transformations a group of all Mobius transformations uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with P S L 2 C ok. And of course, the group of all Mobius transformations is exactly uh, the set of uh, all possible holomorphic automorphisms of the uh, Riemann sphere ok right. So, all biholomorphic maps of the Riemann sphere onto itself which you can also think of as biholomorphic maps of C union infinity the point at infinity uh, on to C union infinity all possible uh, biholomorphic maps they are given exactly by these kind of uh, Mobius transformations which are also called sometimes as uh, linear fractional transformations uh, also as bilinear transformations in some books ok. And the way you identify uh, these uh, Mobius transformations with P S L 2 C is in that way. Now, uh, of course, um, when I say uh, the those uh, Mobius transformations which preserves the complex plane, they are going to be this subgroup and this subgroup corresponds to putting c equal to 0 ok. You put c equal to 0 you will get the uh, upper triangular form ok. And uh, uh, those Mobius transformations with which preserve the upper half plane ok, the set of complex numbers with uh, imaginary path greater than 0 ok the upper half plane. Then these Mobius transformations are going to be exactly these elements with uh, a b c and d real numbers ok. You will get real numbers because uh, if a Mobius transformation preserves the upper half plane ok then it will also preserve the boundary of the upper half plane the boundary of the upper half plane is the real line ok. So, uh, uh, the, re the real line is just thought of as a real axis ok ok. And uh, you know if a Mobius transformation preserves uh, a, do a, a domain it will also preserve the boundary of the domain ok and it will also preserve the exterior of the boundary of that domain right. So, what will happen is that this Mobius trans if you have a Mobius transformation that preserves the upper half plane then it has to preserve it has to map the real line onto itself ok. And uh, that condition will tell you that uh, all the entries 
have to be real numbers okay it will tell you that all the entries have to be real numbers so you can check that right fine so now the question is uh, these are the kind of objects these are the mobius transformations that are going to come come up here all right and i want to know which of them are going to be uh, uh, which of them are going to be coming from the fundamental group namely which of them are going to be dead transformations uh, for a covering okay now um, obviously uh, this has to this has got this has to have to do with uh, uh, certain intrinsic properties of mobius transformations and how we get these properties uh, is by considering uh, two kinds of uh, uh, ideas one is uh, the fact uh, that uh, uh, so one is based on uh, the number of fixed points of the mobius transformation okay and the other thing uh, the other idea that helps us to classify mobius transformations is looking at this uh, uh, this matrix representative okay and looking at its trace okay and the the trace is you know as you know is just the sum of the diagonal elements right so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, say the following things so first let me make the following definition um, uh, uh, so classification um, of mobius transformations Um, uh, can be done can be done based on on two uh, uh, viewpoints a uh, the the number of fixed points number of distinct fixed points um, or let me just say the number of fixed points let me not even say distinct and b uh, the the trace of uh, a matrix representing the transformation okay so the classification uh, is done on two viewpoints so let me uh, so so first of all um, let's look at fixed points okay let's look at fixed points so uh, first of all notice if i have if if i am uh, if i look at a mobius transformation and try to uh, study uh, the fixed points i will get at most two fixed points okay that's because i'll ha i'll be solving a z plus b by c z plus d equal to z okay and that at worst uh, is going to give me uh, in general it's going to give me a quadratic equation in z and it will have uh, two roots all right of course if c is zero i will not get a quadratic equation so uh, so note that uh, uh, there can be at most two fixed points for a non trivial mobius transformation there can be at most two fixed points for a non trivial mobius transformation okay in fact uh, if you uh, find a mobius transformation fixes three points or more then it has to be the identity transformation i mean that's what this means okay that's because again as i told you you will at the most get a quadratic in z that you have to solve for by equating z to a z plus b by c z plus d okay now uh, what we do is we look at the case when uh, the mobius transformation has exactly one fixed point okay and uh, we call the mobius transformation as parabolic okay so uh, so definition uh, 
a Mobius transformation is called parabolic if it has only one fixed point. A Mobius transformation is called parabolic if it has only one fixed point, right. Now, uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the uh, kind of Mobius transformations that you can think of which have only one fixed point? Okay, you can obviously see that you know if I take a translation, z going to z plus uh, b, okay, then uh, that translation uh, will have only one fixed point, namely the point at infinity. Okay, so obvious examples uh, uh, translations z going to z plus a uh, let me put z going to z plus beta are uh, certainly parabolic uh, since uh, 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 of course, you know beta should not be 0 right because I do not want the identity map I am I am not looking at the identity transformation okay beta is not equal to 0 okay um, uh, with uh, infinity as the only fixed point okay infinity is the only fixed point. Um, Now, the question is uh, uh, as I told you um, the uh, the other view point of looking at a Mobius transformation is by looking at the trace of a matrix that represents the transformation. So, if I take this uh, uh, matrix, uh, so what I do is I look at uh, uh, the matrix of this, the matrix representing it. it is well it is uh, 1 beta 0 1 okay. The matrix that represents this is 1 beta 0 1 and uh, of course, this is uh, determinant 1 this is determinant 1 and uh, if I want to consider it as an element of PSL 2 C I have another choice namely I can put minus 1 minus beta 0 minus 1. There are two representatives because if, if you go modulo plus or minus identity, uh, uh, so this has two representatives here, right. Uh, so, I let me write that or minus 1 minus beta 0 minus 1 in SL2C. These are two representatives I can get in SL2C, okay. Uh, now, uh, well of course, you know if I take trace okay, the trace is in this case the trace is going to be 2 trace is some of the diagonal elements. So, trace is 2 okay, and in this case the trace is minus 2 okay. you can always see that if I take an element of uh, PSL okay, uh, PSL 2 C if I take a representative in SL 2 C I will get 2 representatives okay, and both the representatives the only difference will be all entries will differ in sign. Okay. Therefore, what will happen is the tray when you take the trace the trace will also change by sign. Okay. So, in order to make the make this ambiguity disappear instead of considering the trace we will consider the square of the trace. Okay. So, consider consider trace square. Okay. So, if I take trace squared uh, you will see that uh, uh, trace squared of 1 beta 0 1 uh, is 2 and that is also is, is equal to 4 and that is also equal to trace squared of uh, the other representative if I take minus 1 minus beta 0 minus 1. Both of them have trace squared 4 okay. and uh, uh, now uh, 
uh, it is amazing that uh, uh, these two properties actually characterize parabolic uh, 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 this property characterizes a parabolic trans Mobius transformation. Namely, you take a Mobius transformation, okay. Uh, I it, ne it need not directly look like a translation, okay. But uh, uh, if you know it is parabolic, okay, then its trace will be 4, okay. And if the trace is 4, then it will be parabolic. So it's uh, so uh, this property of the uh, the tra I mean the trace squared. So the trace squared being four characterizes a parabolic transformation. Okay, trace squared being four characterizes a parabolic transformation, right? So uh, so let me write this lemma. Um, your Mobius transformation. Um, is parabolic if and only if uh, given a representative um, so let me write a representative in the form uh, a b c d uh, in S L 2 C, uh, which means A D minus B C is 1, okay. Trace squared A B C D that is A plus D the whole squared is actually equal to 4, okay. So, uh, in other words, uh, the property of the Mobius transformation having only one fixed point okay, is captured by uh, the uh, fact that you take a representative matrix okay, in SL 2 then uh, trace squared is 4. Okay. Of course, I again you know the trace squared is important because uh, if I had taken the other representative the trace would have uh, the other representative will be minus a minus b minus c minus d. All right, and uh, the trace of that will be minus a minus of a plus t. Okay, so uh, just to eliminate that sign, we take trace squared, and the trace squared equal to four is the condition for uh, uh, Mobius transformation to be parabolic. Okay, so uh, this can be kind of uh, 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 proved in a nice way. Um, and of course, uh, let me also add uh, one more uh, lemma. We have seen that uh, translations are certainly parabolic. Okay, so the converse is also true in the following sense: you take a parabolic Mobius transformation, then you can conjugate it by some suitable Mobius transformation, so that the resulting transformation is a translation. So, let me write that lemma a Mobius transformation is parabolic if and only if it is conjugate by a Mobius transformation by a suitable Mobius transformation to a translation. Okay. So, please uh, try to understand the following. We have, we have defined a Mobius transformation to be parabolic if it has only one fixed point all right. And then we saw that uh, translations are standard examples of parabolic Mobius transformations. And you take a translation and you calculate its trace squared 
you, you take a translation take a representative matrix calculate trace squared you get 4 ok. Now the trace squared being 4 for a general Mobius transformation with with a with a matrix representative forces uh, conversely that the Mobius transformation has to be parabolic namely that it has only one fixed point ok. Also translations are examples of parabolic Mobius tra transformations and what this lemma says conversely you take a parabolic Mobius transformation you can conjugate it by a Mobius transformation ok and you will get a translation ok. So, what does this mean? The, this means the following. Uh, so, what this means? This means this means if uh, z going to a z plus b by c z plus d is is parabolic uh, uh, then <coughs> and only then we can can we find a Mobius transformation alpha beta comma delta with alpha beta comma delta and this Mobius transformation a b c d then multiplied by alpha beta comma delta inverse. So, I am this is conjugating the matrix representing this Mobius transformation by another Mobius transformation ok. This is equal to a translation. So, it's, it should be of the form 1 0 1 beta uh, let me put something else here. So, put t here ok. So, uh, of course, uh, um, of course, uh, A D minus B C uh, is one, and uh, uh, and alpha B alpha delta minus beta gamma is also one. So these are all uh, Mobius transformations. Uh, uh, these are all representatives in S L two C. Okay, determinant one. Okay. Okay. So you see, actually. Um, See, it's it's very easy to see more or less that uh, um, these lemmas are uh, uh, they are easily provable. So, for example, let me explain. Uh, suppose I want, suppose I have a Mobius transformation which is. Uh, uh, so, suppose I suppose you grant me the first lemma. Suppose you assume the first lemma is true. Okay, then the second lemma can be reduced from the first. Okay, because you see, if a Mobius transformation is parabolic, okay, then uh, um, it is uh, uh, by the by by the previous lemma its trace squared is 4 ok and I claim that if trace squared is 4 you can actually solve for alpha beta gamma delta. So, that you get uh, a transformation like this with for example, even with uh, t equal to 1 ok. So, uh, and the so let us so let me write so, let me write that down ok. So, uh, uh, proof. So, let me number these lemmas let me call this as lemma 1 let me call this as lemma 2 ok. So, well proof of lemma 1 you see. Uh, so, you know so, you know the, the condition is for the Mobius transformation to be parabolic it has to it has to have only one fixed point ok. So, the condition is that uh, a z plus b by c z plus d equal to z has only one uh, solution ok. When you say it has only one fixed point 
then uh, this equation should have only one solution okay. So, this means let us write this down uh, uh, so um, so so maybe I should write here if uh, uh, z going to a z plus b by c z plus d is parabolic uh, then this has only one solution uh, that is let me let's cross multiply this I will get a z plus b is equal to c z squared plus d z uh, uh, has only one solution has only one solution okay. Um, and if I if, if I rewrite it I will get c z squared plus d minus a into z minus b equal to 0 okay has only one solution okay. So, that is uh, uh, so when will that happen there are two cases we can consider the, the case when c is 0 and when c is not 0 if c is 0 okay uh, then uh, it will happen okay if if c is 0 okay uh, notice uh, if c is 0 then a d is 1 because a d minus b c is 1 if c is 0 a d is 1. So, uh, in particular uh, d minus a cannot be 0 if uh, if d minus a is 0 okay then you will get uh, uh, mm, yeah so so let us look at this if c is 0 a d is 1 uh, uh, in fact I think um, yeah if c is 0 a d is 1 d minus a is not 0 then uh, uh, z equal to b by uh, d minus a is the unique fixed point okay. The other possibility is uh, uh, d is equal to a okay uh, if d is equal to a okay then what happens is so you say c is 0 d is equal to a then the the transformation becomes is z going to you see is going to be a z plus b by c is 0. Uh, so, 0 z plus d is just a. So, I will get z plus uh, uh, b by a okay and this is a translation this is a translation and it has uh, only one fixed point namely the point at infinity okay uh, is a translation with infinity as the unique fixed point okay. So, this disposes of the case when c equal to 0 okay if c is not 0 what happens. So, let me go over here and continue if c is not equal to 0 okay the we, uh, we want the quadratic uh, c z squared plus uh, it was uh, d minus a into z minus b equal to 0 okay you want only one solution okay you want only one solution you want only one fixed point okay that means this quadratic equation should have equal roots okay okay to have equal roots okay which happens if uh, uh, the discriminant is 0 so I will get d minus a the whole squared uh, minus 4 into c into minus b uh, is 0 okay. So, the condition becomes d minus a the whole squared plus 4 b c is equal to 0 
okay. If I expand it I will get d squared plus a squared minus 2 a d plus 4 b c is 0 okay. But you see a d minus b c is equal to 1 okay. So I will replace this I will get I will get uh, a d minus 1 is equal to b c. So 4 a d minus 4 is equal to 4 b c. So if I put it back here I will get d squared plus a squared minus 2 a d uh, plus 4 a d minus 4 is 0 and this will come to d pl a plus d the whole squared is equal to 4 okay. So you will get trace squared a b c d is equal to 4 okay. So you see if c is not equal to 0 then we get trace squared equal to 4 alright. Uh, so I will have to go back and look at uh, these two cases um, and uh, look at whether I can conclude whether uh, trace squared uh, is equal to 4. So the first thing I want to say is you see uh, in the case c equal to 0 okay this is the unique fixed point and when I say uni is the unique fixed point it is the unique fixed point in the complex plane okay. So there is actually one more fixed point and that fixed point is the point at infinity okay and therefore this case cannot occur because we have assumed that it is parabolic. So I just want to emphasize the following thing namely uh, when I say uh, look at the number of fixed points I mean in the extended complex plane okay. It is important that you also look at whether infinity is a fixed point or not okay which is exactly happening for example in the case of a translation in the case of a translation the unique fixed point is a point at infinity okay. So uh, you also have to look at whether infinity is a fixed point and if c is 0 okay then uh, the, trans the, the transformation becomes z going to a z plus b by d okay and for that uh, infinity is a fixed point also the point at infinity is also a fixed point. So you get two fixed points in c union infinity okay one a finite uh, complex number which is a fixed point the other one is a point at infinity. So you get two fixed points and therefore c equal to the case c equal to 0 uh, d uh, uh, the case c is equal to 0 um, uh, uh, d not equal to a okay cannot occur okay. So so in that so the, that case we, we do not have anything to prove alright. So let me write that down so let me write that here the case c equal to 0 d not equal to a uh, gives two fixed points uh, so does not occur okay and what about the other remaining case the other remaining case is when c is 0 and d is equal to a okay then uh, in that case you can calculate the trace trace squared is actually 4 if if c is equal to 0 and d is equal to a okay then you know uh, a d equal to 1 will imply that a squared is 1 okay. So trace squared uh, a b c d is going to be uh, a plus d the whole squared that is uh, uh, 4 uh, uh, 4 a squared it is a plus uh, a plus a the whole square it is 2 a whole square so it is 4 a squared uh, but you know uh, a squared is 1 so this is equal to 4 so you will get trace squared equal to 4. So what we have established is that if you start with uh, parabolic transformation okay which is by definition a, a Mobius transformation having only one fixed point in uh, the extended complex plane then trace squared has to be 4 alright and let us prove the converse okay that is also quite easy to see conversely if uh, trace squared uh, a b c d which is a plus d the whole squared is equal to 4 okay suppose this is the case uh, again we look at uh, the cases when c is 0 or c is not equal to 0 if c is not equal to 0 then uh, we are in this situation 
okay and you can actually uh, reverse this argument and uh, uh, you will get that this quadratic equation has discriminant 0 and therefore there is only one uh, root okay and therefore you will get uh, that it is uh, parabolic alright and notice that if uh, so I will have to look at the situation uh, when c is equal to 0 okay and the case when c is equal to 0 okay there are two cases uh, I will show that uh, a equal to d will occur alright and a not equal to d will not occur okay. So let me write that down uh, if c is not equal to 0 then uhhh c z squared plus d minus a z plus minus b equal to 0 uh, has 0 discriminant and hence uh, a unique solution okay and uh, uh, And of course in this case you must remember that infinity is infinity cannot be a solution for this because you have c z squared plus d minus a into z uh, is equal to b okay if I push the b to the other side if I substitute infinity on this side since c is not 0 I will get infinity on this side on the other side I will have b and b cannot be equal to infinity it is a finite complex a b c d of course are of course com finite complex numbers so in this case you will not get infinity as a fixed point there is no chance. So this is something that you should always keep doing you must check whether by any chance infinity is becoming a fixed point okay. So uh, so if c is not equal to 0 then this has uh, 0 discriminant and hence a unique solution uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, trans the, the, the Mobius transformation uh, is parabolic is parabolic well if if c equal to 0 uh, we will have uh, uh, if c is equal to 0 you will have a d equal to 1 uh, also you will have um, a minus d the whole squared is uh, a plus d the whole squared uh, minus 4. Uh, minus 4 um, a d okay and that will be uh, but, I, but you know a plus d the whole square is given as 4 so I will get 4 minus 4 which is 0 okay and this will tell you that uh, a is equal to d alright and uh, uh, so if a is equal to 0 d then uh, the transformation becomes becomes uh, z going to uh, a z plus b by 0 z plus a which is just z plus b by a and uh, this has only infinity as the unique fixed point and therefore is parabolic which has which is parabolic it is a translation. So of course when c is 0 the case a not equal to d that does not occur uh, just like we saw here. So this proves lemma 1 alright okay so uh, let me now try to give you a proof of lemma 2 which is quite simple. So uh, uh, proof of lemma 2 okay so uh, there is a there is a very very easy case namely if you are able to find a Mobius transformation such that when you conjugate uh, this a b c d. Uh, by this Mobius transformation you get a translation suppose you are able to find one okay then you know if I take trace on both sides okay you know trace is invariant under conjugation therefore if I compute the trace on the left side I will simply get trace of the matrix in the middle okay and therefore it is going to be just a plus d the whole square okay on the other hand here if I compute the trace I get 4 okay so if this holds then it is clear that uh, the Mobius transformation has trace squared equal to 4 
and by lemma 1 it has to be parabolic okay. So let me write that let me call this equation as uh, a star okay I, I am calling this equation as star okay uh, clearly if star holds uh, we get trace uh, of a plus d the whole square uh, trace uh, not of a plus b the whole square, trace squared a b c d is equal to a plus b d the whole squared is equal to trace squared of 1 0 1 and uh, t which is 4 which is 4 okay. Uh, so by so by lemma 1 uh, the the given uh, the Mobius transformation is it going to a z plus b by c z plus d is uh, parabolic. Conversely, assume that uh, 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 assume that it is parabolic. Okay. Conversely, assume z going to a z plus b by c z plus d is parabolic. Uh, we can try to solve for alpha beta gamma delta complex numbers uh, so that star holds uh, say uh, t say with uh, t equal to 1. So, uh, you write write star as you see alpha beta gamma delta into a b c d is equal to 1 1 0 1 into alpha beta gamma delta. I am just uh, multiplying on the right by alpha beta gamma delta ok. Uh, we get uh, 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 four equations in uh, alpha beta gamma delta okay uh, which are which give which are homogeneous with determinant matrix uh, with coefficient matrix So the coefficient matrix if you write it down you will get a 4 by 4 coefficient matrix uh, having determinant and guess what the determinant is the determinant is uh, uh, a plus d the whole squared minus 2 ok. So it is uh, 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 no it is a plus d minus 2 the whole squared sorry it is a plus d minus 2 <coughs> the whole squared okay and you see uh, which is which is not 0 not equal to 0 by lemma 1 okay uh, oh sorry which is equal to 0 by lemma 1 sorry which is equal to 0 okay see because we have assumed uh, this is parabolic lemma 1 says that uh, 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 trace squared is uh, 4 okay so trace is plus or minus 2 all right now if trace is 2 then this is 0 okay if trace is minus 2 you can solve for the same system by replacing a b c d with minus a minus b minus c minus d in which case you will get a minus here okay. So uh, if trace squared is 4 I can really solve for this all right and uh, I will get a non trivial solution and therefore I can find uh, uh, a Mobius transformation like this I leave it to you to check that you can 
uh, also make sure that the non trivial solution satisfies determinant 1 okay. So I leave that as an exercise so that proves that uh, you know uh, lemma 2 is true okay. So you know uh, if you want to solve a homogeneous system and you want a, a non trivial solution then the uh, coefficient matrix has to have determinant 0 and the point is the determinant has this it is connected with the trace that is the whole point okay. So okay. so I will stop here okay we will continue later.